I'm at the Shoal Creek Living Museum. This is an example of a village, I believe, that would be sort of contemporary to when the westward Oregon Trail migration was happening. This isn't what those westward bound pioneers would have been building. This is the civilization that they would be leaving. A lot of cool stuff to look at up here. This cabin is meant to symbolize the doctor's office in these sort of villages. And I noticed right up there in that window, I don't know if you can see it, is a little skeleton. The likely outcome of medical practice back then, I guess, garden. where all the medicinal herbs would be grown, I assume. This place really is delightful. You should check it out. Beautiful time of day though. A cool morning, Missouri summer, doesn't get much better. The back of the schoolhouse, let's take a look. Of course, we have the mercantile. 
half of it would be just somebody's house, the other half the, the store for the village. This house, by modern standards, is perhaps, perhaps average. It's what was known as the Thornton Mansion back in the day. I think my favorite structure out here has to have been that wrist mill, the big water wheel. The St. Louis Arch is of course a dramatic monument that symbolizes Missouri's significance as the gateway to the west. But I wanted to come here to Independence, Missouri because this is where that westward trail migration actually began. Wendy has been very patient with me as I've taken a little bit longer getting back here to Missouri from Oregon than I had intended. Actually, she's been more than patient. She's been super helpful. She's been on the computer looking at points of interest for me and pinning them in text messages so I could get to them pretty easily. So thanks, Wendy, and I'll be home soon. Folks here are naturally very proud of Truman. He came from the state. I think I'll go and drop by his presidential library, since I'm here. We've been looking at history on my journey back home, but it doesn't all have to be Old West history. Walking through the Truman Library was more compelling than I thought it could be. There's way too much material to present in this video, so I'm posting a whole separate video just about the Truman Library. If you're interested, check it out. I hope you will. Here's one clip as a preview for that video. I present to this convention for the office of President of these United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Democrats convene in Chicago to elect presidential and vice presidential nominees. 
Senator Harry S. Truman of Missouri is nominated as the running mate for FDR. It's been my privilege to be a United States Senator for the past nine and one half years. And I am to continue the effort to help shorten the war and win the peace under the direction of the great, our great leader, Franklin D. Roosevelt. <laughs> question mark in every American heart is about Truman. Can he swing the job? And despite his limited capabilities, I think he can. He comes into office almost unknown to the people at large, and they will await with great anxiety the result of the test that he has to meet. Roosevelt was a great architect. Perhaps Truman will be a good carpenter. When people think of President Truman, it is with a mixture of friendliness, loyalty, and gentle skepticism. No man ever came to the presidency of the United States under more difficult circumstances than does Harry S. Truman. It would be foolish to pretend that President Truman possesses the qualities of leadership needed by the nation at the moment. Truman casts a long shadow on the history of our world. This was a moving experience. It's a moving experience even if you already know the history. I wanted to mention something that helps tie things together historically. Truman was succeeded as president by Eisenhower, and Eisenhower was largely responsible for establishing the interstate highway system. That interstate highway system followed the old Oregon Trail, a lot of it did at least, and that's what brought me back here. Right behind me is an old train depot. This was built here in Independence, right at the very end of the wagon trails heading west. From then on, folks would take the Transcontinental Railroad to get to Oregon. This building was actually in service until 1960. Okay, it's just me. 
Don't you remember me? It's good to be home. I'm happy to say that my own little prairie schooner got me here safely. Eros wants to go in the pond. Eros is heading for the pond. Eros is more interested in the pond than saying hello to me. Good to see you. Hi. Did you miss me? Mm-hmm. A little bit? A little bit. Okay. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip back to the moon with me.